Uh, if we are ready, we can uh, start. From okay. Yeah, yes, Sadam, you may start. Good morning and welcome, everyone. So nice to see you all. Uh, just uh, before uh, we start the program, I just want to mention a couple of things in relation to the Zoom. Uh, this uh, program is uh, recorded, it's live stream, it will be uh, available on the YouTube. During the program, if you have any questions, please do post them on our chat box. Any relevant questions at the given moment will be addressed at that time, and the remaining questions will be addressed at the end during the question and answer se uh, session. Today's program is organized by Shangeri Vidya Bharati Foundation, SVBF, and uh, Ontario Konkani Association, OCA. The topic is uh, diabetic-friendly cooking, and the speaker is uh, Shiva Swaminathan. Most of you know her very well. Shiva is the proud founder of uh, Chef uh, Shiva Cooking School, and she is the founder and the executive chair of the South Asian Diabetes Chapter. She is an avid traveler as well as uh, her hobby is cooking. With that, uh, Shiva, over to you. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Um, and uh, I want to thank uh, Oka and the SMEBF uh, Temple um, Association for bringing uh, this uh, cooking demo live. Uh, I also want to thank everybody tuning in on a you know, it's going to be a gorgeous day uh, on, a, on a Sunday morning early to tune in to see this. Um, I want to show you guys today uh, something a little different. Uh, eating for healthy eating, eating for diabetes, um, for especially people with diabetes is, is always like a pendulum, you know. Um, it's, you know, I want to specifically highlight um, my life changed when I was diagnosed with type one diabetes. I had to watch how I was eating. And I wanna connect the dots today with the, the recipes we're doing today and why the recipes were made this way. And one of the things that I, I wanna highlight is one of the handouts that I had sent to you uh, was the glycemic index uh, table that was put together by Diabetes Canada. And that is sort of like a guidelines that's going to help you navigate in terms of sort of watching your blood sugar. Um, as a type 1 diabetic or if you're pre-diabetes, you may not be testing your blood sugar as much as I do. Uh, as a type 1 diabetic, um, you know, I wear an insulin pump right here. You know, if I, I wear this. It gives, you know, it's a hose. It's, divide, you know, and I have an infusion site. It gives a little bit of insulin the whole day, uh, just like how a healthy pancreas does. But then when I eat, um, it's specifically when I eat food like carbohydrate, you know, we have some flour here. I'm just going to, you know, are you able to see this? Uh, I'm just going to get my tech here. Uh, So thank you. My 14-year-old's my tech. She's incredible. Tell them uh, to switch. It's okay. So if you're able to switch to the other camera, you can. If not, uh, as you know, if you could just spawn to the other camera um, where I have this camera plugged into the ingredients. Are you able to see that? Okay, so there you go. So this 
we're going to be one of the demo we're going to be using um, is one of the ingredients we're going to be using is um, whole wheat flour. And I'm going to talk about this while I'm going to make the, the dough. Um, and what I want to highlight is again, coming back to the discussion we were having, eating healthier, you know, it's hard to do low GI. If you don't know what low GI is, basically it's any food that you eat and how fast the food absorbs into your blood sugar. And for example, a teaspoon of sugar gets absorbed and it's, and it's rated in a GI index as 100. That means it gets absorbed quickly and it would sort of skyrocket and then it would crash. And then when you eat fruits, they're kind of slowly digested in our body, okay? Right. And things like we eat here, um, like whole grain, uh, the, the, the roti that we're gonna be making, uh, like a chapati, um, we're going to be slowing it down, okay? T typically roti is made, it, it all depends. You know, some people may make roti with all-purpose flour. Some people might mix a little bit of all-purpose flour with whole wheat, um, or sometimes, you know, they might mix like a chickpea flour, like basin. So there's like whole different way of doing it. And sometimes when we are pressed for time, specifically, you know, Indian grocery stores, they carry ready-made roti. And many times, you know, even I'm guilty of it sometimes when I don't have time. But one of the greatest things, and I'll talk to you about label reading, in, you know, in the end, but, you know, we have to watch our carbohydrate. We really, especially if we are with diabetes, we need to make sure that our carbohydrate is being processed so that we're not crashing. And one of the, the greatest thing about it is, you know, having uh, uh, South Asian, you know, specifically Indian style, like chapati or roti, throughout India or the Indian subcontinent is eaten all different times, okay? Some places it's eaten for breakfast. Some places it's eaten as a tiffin in the evening or for dinner. And some places maybe even for lunch. When I go to India for a visit, I find rice is very hard to digest in a sense that it's a big meal and it just does a huge number on my blood sugar. So if I'm kind of going shopping or going to for a full day of outing, for me, honestly, the escape is having roti. You know, I would have, you know, when I go to a restaurant, I would order a couple of, uh, you know, dry chapati or roti with a little bit of vegetable sabji. And that's the way I have to be monitoring blood, my blood sugar. Because when I eat a meal like rice in the afternoon, my blood sugars go crazy. So coming back to the roti is we're going to be making roti kind of exploring alternative grains here today. And a lot of these grains we use in our Indian cooking, okay? Uh, a lot of these grains are, um, I call them ancient grain. This is part of Indian subcontinent. We use it all in different purposes. But today I want to show you how to make this roti combining, you know, a whole bunch of different grains, you know, the flours, okay? and. I also said, you know, for the recipe, if you don't have all of these flowers, don't worry about it. It's again, it's a recipe. It's a guideline for you to explore at home. So if you don't have it today, some other day, keep the recipe, try it out. Okay. And everything in cooking um, that, that when I teach, it is, it's not the recipe, but it's understanding the idea, understanding the technique and why the food that I make is the way that I have done. So a lot of it is that I do is what you call a recipe testing and recipe development. And when I do it, I test my own blood sugar to see how they react. And I test with a couple of other type one diabetics and say, hey, eat it, tell me what your blood sugar is like. And that's how I know that whether it is skyrocketing blood sugar or it's kind of like medium because every day, you know, whether you're a type one diabetic or type two or pre-diabetes, or you don't have diabetes, you have a healthy pancreas. The idea is to eat 
our whole grains moderately, especially carbohydrate. And it's also about prevention. Okay, so I want to talk hugely about prevention. Now I'm going to be making the dough is the idea to eat healthier is also about prevention. It's not for today that you have to worry, because a lot of people um, that I work with are dietitians and doctor, you know, in my South Asian diabetes committee, uh, diabetes chapter. And what happens a lot of times is when people are diagnosed with prediabetes or diabetes, they change their diet. Until then, they continue to eat. Sometimes people eat the way it is because our food is so good. You know, for example, I'm not trying to poo-poo anything, but definitely when you eat, like, for example, a naan, right? Naan is completely all-purpose flour and it's delicious with some sabji or, you know, whatever curry you decide to do. But unfortunately, what does it do? It just rises your blood sugar like crazy. Because when I watch it in my, um, you know, my, my pump, I wear a CGM, which is a con continuous glucose monitor. It sends signal to my pump every five minutes how my blood sugar is doing. And I know when I eat rice or something like a naan, my blood sugar just goes crazy. And so the idea is also prevention. OK, so if we eat healthily today, tomorrow we can ward off perhaps diabetes, like prediabetes. And or we can just coast if we are in prediabetes condition, never to develop fully type 2 diabetes. OK, so going with that, we're going to be doing the multigrain methi roti. OK, methi is a. Uh, again, used in the South Asian subcontinent. It is a fenugreek um, leaf. Um, this is uh, a beautiful uh, green um, that is comes from the fenugreek seeds, okay, methi seeds. And it's delicious um, and it, it requires a little bit of work. So if you're able to get it from the grocery store, it requires a little bit of work. And already my guy is a little wilted. I saved a couple this morning. Um, they usually give the whole plant, you know, it's got like, you know, uh, roots. And the idea is you have to just pluck the leaves, you know, leave the stem because the stem gets, uh, sometimes they're really uh, chewy and hard, so you don't need it. So just pluck the leaves and they come really, really sandy. So pluck it, put it in a bowl, Soak it in salt water for about five or 10 minutes and then chop it finely. It's a bit laborious, but the result is really worth it. So the idea is if you have access to getting the methi leaves, go for it in your supermarket. If not, you can substitute spinach. And spinach, we all know in a grocery store, we get it readily. It's fantastic. And, um, but the only thing I would say is don't use frozen spinach. Okay, frozen spinach has a lot of liquid and it's, it has its place. Frozen spinach is fantastic if you are doing like a sauce or stew or curry, okay? Because then it just mixes with the curry. Like if you're making like a sog, it might be okay. You know, the spinach sog uh, dish that you see. But for our roti today, we want it to be as, fresh and lively as possible. Okay, so that's uh, my two cents. And let's get started. And another tool I was going to say before getting our um, roti started is sift your flour. I know it's really hard. Sometimes depending on where you store your flowers, they get lumpy and they get hard. So when we kind of put it, we have to kind of break it up with our finger. Sifting is great because it kind of helps to get the lumps out and then you can just kind of, you know, uh, how do you say, just powder it with your fingers. So I sifted all my flowers. And before, one more minute before we start it, I wanna just show some of the flowers we've used. You know, in the ingredient, I said two cups of whole wheat flour. And the one that I have used is I love this product. And again, I'm not getting paid to say this. They're not paying me. But this uh, whole wheat flour, you can even see there's a lot of bran in it. When you have a lot of bran, which is fiber, 
it's your best friend for diabetes. And I'm going to talk about it while we're making the roti. But this brand of whole wheat flour has the whole grain whole wheat flour. Um, I know there might be a question later about, hey, can I use otta flour? I'll come to that. But unfortunately, a lot of the otta flour sifts away a lot of this good stuff. So when you get it, otta flour, if you, you know, if you try to sift it, there won't be any fiber in it. So I like this one. And this, I think I got, it's the compliments from Sobe. So that, that their whole brain is, I, I really like working with it. And moving on to next is Bajra flour. I, I kind of put it there. Um, the Bajra flour is what we call ragi. Okay, a lot of people know it as ragi in southern part of India. And it's basically millet. And the millet, there's so many different varieties of millet in India, if you look at it, you know, there's fox millet and there's like a whole bunch of different millet. But this millet has actually the skin, it's red and it's been ground. So that's why it gives it a sort of like a really dark color. And we call it ragi. A lot of people make uh, chapati. Sometimes they make, uh, what do you call a guru, like a kanji or whatever. And it's fantastic. So that we're gonna be using. Okay, so that's bajra flour. And we have jovar as well. Jovar is sorghum, okay? Sorghum is, again, a beautiful whole grain. It looks really big. It looks like millet, but just like in about, it looks like almost like, how do you say, uh, looks like tapioca pearls. It's a little bit bigger. And again, lots of fiber in it. It's so, 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 so good for you. And that's what it is. So jovar is sorghum. And if you're not able to get it in your grocery store, certainly like the, like a bulk food store, they would have it. So ask it by, you know, sorghum flour and you can find it. And same thing with bajra flour, ask for millet flour. That's the, that's the same name. Um, they will um, direct you to it. So that's what we're going to be using. So if you look here in the in close up, that's our ragi flour. Okay. That's our ragi flour, which is the bajra. And that's our sorghum flour. It's a little bit lighter and it's fabulous. So we're going to be using all of these flour. And lastly, we have our usual uh, quarter cup of basin flour, which is our chickpea flour. Okay, chickpea flour is really good. Um, you know, chickpea has a lot of protein and a lot of healthy fiber, but it's also a healthy carbohydrate. Okay, so we're going to be using a lot of that. Before we get started, I'm just going to check my insulin pump to tell me where my blood sugars are. My blood sugars are stable, okay? But I'm gonna drink a little bit of juice because I'm at 5.3, so it could go lower. So that's one of the things about living as a type one diabetic, we are doing real live cooking demo with a, you know, with the type one diabetic. So I, this is my life. I have to, how do you say, balance my life. I had a healthy breakfast, but you know, a lot of activities makes my blood sugar go low. So I'm just going to take a little bit of orange juice. I'm going to wash my hands and we're going to get our demo started. Okay, so that's for introduction. I'm going to keep an eye on my clock. So we have two cups. Okay, I'll, I'll show you when, when it's done, then, you know, when, when I mix the flour, you'll know. So here it is two cups of whole wheat flour, one cup of ragi. one cup of sorghum and quarter cup of basin. Okay. So you can see all my flowers in there. Now we are going to, I'm going to show you before we get started. Here is my methi two cups washed and chopped and ready to go. Okay. Now we're gonna be mixing all the dry ingredients. And I have a teaspoon of um, 
cashmere chili powder. It's a little bit redder than the normal chili powder. It gives it a little bit more of a, a bite than our regular chili powder. I like using that for roti. So I'm gonna put that. I have two green chilies finely chopped. If you are, you know, if you don't want the heat, you can omit it. If you don't want the chili powder, omit it. If you don't want the chilies in it, omit it. No, no, no worries. I have a teaspoon of cumin here, and I'm going to use my mortal and pestle. I like it that way because it's just so good. Okay. If you want to put a hole, go for it. Or if you have uh, cumin powder, go for it. But I just like the fresh taste of the seeds. Mm, smells so, 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 so good. And what else? All the dry ingredients I'm going to mix, right? I'm going to put half a teaspoon of salt. Looking for my measuring spoons. They're right behind me. So half a teaspoon. And the part of the reason I'm putting half a teaspoon is, again, I'm watching my salt. If you're a person that has uh, high blood pressure, uh, you know, hypertension, watch your um, salt. And if you want a little bit more, you know, go for it. Now I'm mixing all my dry ingredients, okay? This is where you can make some modifications, okay? I said um, one tablespoon of olive oil. And if you wanna put some ghee, a homemade ghee or store-bought ghee, that's fine, you can put it. It's, it really gives it a nice flavor, but I'm gonna save my ghee for later and I'll show you a nice trick. So I'm going to, this is um, half a teaspoon. So I'm going to put four of these to get my tablespoon of um, oil. And I want to make sure I got all my stuff. Yep. Now I'm going to put my fenugreek um, leaves. I'm just going to move it. I'm going to move all my ingredients away. They're not in the way. So there we go. So now comes the trick. I have my water. And water ratio could be different depending on the flowers you use. This is why I kind of put water as required and it could change. There's no other way to do it. And if you have, like a KitchenAid dough, you know, with a dough hook, you can do it. But I like doing it by my hand because it's very therapeutic as well. It kind of lets me zone out in the kitchen. Any questions there so far? If there's any questions coming on chat that's related to do it, let's, let's take them up while I'm mixing it. No questions yet, Siva. Okay, thank you so much. I have my own question. You, said, you said uh, not to use frozen spinach. What about uh, frozen methi? No. No. Nope. Okay. Because bas basically the, the frozen stuff will eel water, but, but you can experiment with it if you like, because the idea is if you take the frozen methi 
and mix it with the flour, then just watch the re water ratio, okay? But what I would do is if there's frozen met methi or even spinach, take it out of the package, you know, chop it up, um, put it through um, the, oh, where did I put it? Like a large strainer like that, put it over and let the water come down, okay? And then really squeeze out the water. And then you can use the water for the dough as well. So experiment with it. I, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to experiment with it, but my only worry was about using it directly, like right now out of the freezer would, would require, you know, a little bit of juggling the water. But if you could take it out of the freezer, you know, let it, um, let it uh, sort of sit on the strain, you know, in the strainer, take the, you know, how do you say, you know, take that water, incorporate it, probably it'll work. Okay. Sure. Okay. And Good. one more thing I was going to say okay. is I didn't do it for this recipe and I'm, I'm working on a cookbook. Um, if you have access to like moringi leaves, fabulous, so healthy. It is now talk of every, every health, health blogs out there. Um, we used to have a moringi, a uh, tree in our house in India. And the moringi leaves are uh, supposed to be like a superfood. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have access to getting moringi leaves, it's fantastic. They also sell moringi powder these days. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, of all the places I got it from Amazon, I've been experimenting with it. It's fabulous. So you can put like a teaspoon of it or whatever. It's really, really good. That's the drumstick. Uh, leaf, right? Leaf of exactly. Uh, yes. Exactly. Um, there is a question. Yeah. From Gita, are ragi and joar gluten free? I'm sorry. What was the question? Are ragi and joar uh -huh. gluten free? Um. Yes, it is. Um. It. But my, my only worry is how it's been processed. Because the idea is if you get it from a bulk food store, you, you may have to be careful because you might have, um, how do you say, those scoopers could be contaminated with other flour. But if you're getting it from a package like I showed you, it's fine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now you can see my dough is come together. I want to be really careful with the water ratio. And right now it's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it out here. I don't want to work my dough too much because when we're going to roll it, you know, we can do it. But what I'm just going to do is just gather my dough like this. It's beautiful. Look at this. Right? This is the kind of a consistency you want. I'm going to clean my fingers after this. Um, but what you can do is you can also, I would re, if you want to freeze it, I would make sure really tightly, um, you know, covered up with um, like a cellophane, Ziploc, like, and, and freeze it. So there, it doesn't get any freezer burns, okay? So I'm going to put it in my container, in my bowl. Or let it rest okay and we'll come back i'm going to wash my finger then we're going to make our soup any questions so far okay i'm going to put away my water we will neuter our water for our kitchen recipe. You're gonna love making this soup. This soup is so, so, so good. It's a huge hit in our family. We have it a lot. So let's bring the stove back. I turn my stove on because my stove is very, very slow. My stove behind me is industrial strength it cooks like that but it's not going to work for the zoom so i'm going to turn this guy on and i got my saucepan ready and what i'm going to do 
is I'm gonna bring my ingredients for the rest into the counter. There we go. And one of the things that I want to show you very quickly is for the soup, I put what do you call one cup soup, um, soup like dry bean mix. You can find them in your supermarket. In my supermarket, I found this one. It's a PC menu one. So if you look at it, it's look at all these beautiful, beautiful grains, right? And different grocery store completely has a different one. It's called soup mix, totally different kind of grains. Okay, the only difference is I wasn't crazy about the, the new pack. Again, nobody's paying me to say this, but this one really um, uh, became more, how do you say, um, softer, but you can make a fantastic rajma out of this. And I would, you know, if anybody's interested for a, a like, you know, really nice rajma, you know, please email me or Param and I will pass the recipe to you guys. It came out really good. So I was testing for this recipe. This one came out, you know, too soft. So I'm using these guys. So we have our ingredients ready. We have a cup of this amazing, you know, the soup mix you can find in the stores. It's got a bit of everything. It's got barley, it's got rice, it's got green and yellow split pea. Um, fantastic. On top of that, we're going to be using a little bit of also the moon bean that uh, we usually use. Okay, so we're going to be combining both. So I have my soup pot ready. What I'm going to do is we're going to get started. And before we start, while, while my pan is getting hot, again, I don't like to use too much of powders. I like experimenting. So what we have here is cumin and fennel, okay, teaspoon of each. And I'm going to, again, break it up. And that really makes your soup very nice and aromatic. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it aside. And now, So we're gonna heat our oil. Again, we're gonna do two table, I'm gonna do one tablespoon and then we'll come back for tempering. So I've got a tablespoon of oil here. I'm going to saute my onion. I'll bring the camera over then you could, you could see it, but I'm just gonna assemble it and I'll show you guys. You can see. Okay. Sauteing my onion. Okay. Then I'm going to add my beans. Don't forget, this is a soup. So if you get the order, don't worry about it, okay? Because we're gonna just boil everything, so. Eva, there's a question. What oil did you use? Very good question. Um, I like to use for high heat for Indian cooking, uh, canola oil. And there's a lot of uh, um, study out there. Canola oil is not so good, GMO. Uh, I work with a Canadian producer and canola is 100% Canadian. If you look at canola, it's not soybean. Canola looks like mustard seeds, okay? And that's really proprietor to Canada and is grown in Saskatchewan. And it's got a really, really high smoke point, okay? And if you don't want to use canola oil, you can use safflower oil if you like. It's, you know, it's, uh, you know, clear. You could also use, um, for example, a grapeseed oil, it has a higher smoke point. So, you know, in terms of price point, canola, grapeseed, and then the end is like avocado oil. Cause right now you see like in a lot of blogs, people say, you know, avocado oil, you know, if you want for that, you know, go for it. So now I be, I've added both of my, you know, uh, my beans. Now I'm gonna add my ginger. Again, people might say, hey, can I use ginger powder? 
no, it, for this recipe, I wouldn't use ginger powder or garlic powder. I like to use fresh garlic, fresh ginger. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, already it smells really good. And if there's people out there that, you know, um, in terms of specific diet saying, hey, can I leave the, the garlic out? Absolutely, no, no problem. So I've added my ginger and garlic. Now I'm going to be adding the, 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 the uh, fennel and cumin that I pounded. Uh, smells heavenly. Again, we need smell a vision in the future. It already smells really good. So I added my cumin and my fennel. Then if you have curry paste, if you have like an instant curry paste, it's fine. But if not, I have here. The, the ratio that I have given, I have chili powder, coriander powder, and turmeric powder, and I gave the, uh, the ratio there. And we're dry mixing everything. So you can already see what I'm doing because spices need to be cooked. You can't just sort of add them and expect them to work. For Indian cooking, you really need to cook the spices to get the flavor out. So that's what I'm doing, dry roasting them. And lastly, I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Okay. So once I've added my stuff, I'm going to add my water. Couple of questions, Siva. Yeah. You want to make, if we want to make our own mix, is there any ratio? Uh, what, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, like I said, this recipe is a guideline and you want to make your own ratio, go for it. Uh, I have a half a lemon here. I'm just gonna squeeze it. And I'm gonna drop it inside. You're gonna, you're gonna see why. Okay, I'm gonna get some more water. How much water did I say here? Four cups, so that was two cups. Is everyone with me so far? I'm sure they are very clear. If there's any questions from YouTube, we can take them up. Yeah, none so far. Okay. So the question about the ratio, is, is there a, a ratio that we can use was the question. Oh, so you want to know exactly what ratio to use? Yes. Okay, so we have here one teaspoon. Sorry, um, there are actually a couple of questions in um, YouTube. Okay. Uh, they're asking how about, this was actually for the methi roti. Somehow I missed it, my apologies. So the question was, how about ajwain seeds? Can we add it in the dough? I apologize. I, I, I was just putting oil on this. Just, no problem. The, so the question was, in the methi roti, can you add ajwain seeds in the dough? Absolutely. Absolutely. I apologize. Yes. I, I think I put it in my recipe. I'm not so sure. But ajwain in, um, in, in southern India, in Tamil, we say omam. Absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Great. Mm. One more question, Siva. Yeah. How about mustard oil? Is mustard oil good? No. Okay. Mustard oil, um, I know a lot of Bengali cooking is used. Um, mustard oil is great if you are using like things like fish or meat because a mustard oil has a stronger uh, taste and odor. So I would not use it for here, but mustard oil, you know, use it for your meat cooking. Like in here, what I want is an oil that is... Uh, how do you say, it has um, no taste. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Any questions so far? I'm going to let yeah. uh, Siva back to the ratio question. So yep. if we were mixing our own dals and grains, what proportions would we use? In terms of dal, like I, for for this, like like I said, this is a soup, right? Okay. Soups are really good in a sense that they're going to come out no matter what you use. I'm just going to put on a lid on the back. Long so you're asking the ratio of beans and the spices? Is that what the question is? No, just the beans, the different beans. Okay, the so beans. the beans, like if like every supermarket has what do you call these bean mix so look for that because it's already been done but if you want to make your own i would try to put more emphasis on grain so i would put it on say for barley for example okay i would put like maybe like because we have two cups here um sorry one cup so i would put probably maybe you could even kind of like say hey you know what uh like a quarter cup of barley, quarter cup of like a split uh, piece, like um, a split piece, um, and then maybe some red lentils, maybe quarter cup of that, uh, maybe some brown rice, a quarter cup of that. So try to sort of come to a one cup ratio, but that you can play with that. I would try to give more emphasis for the fiber and then I would try to give more emphasis to protein and rice would be the last. So maybe rice would be just a uh, less than a quarter cup. So I would say, you know, quarter cup of barley, quarter cup of like yellow split pea because it's protein and healthy carb uh, and uh, maybe like red split lentils and rice would be just less than a quarter cup. So you, you, you need to kind of play with your ratio for one cup and that's what I would do. Thank you. Uh, another question, can we soak the soup mix overnight for faster cooking? Absolutely. It's it's better next day, trust me. So the, the soup is, is again, um, we're going to be making it and it's going to be ready for us to enjoy right now. But what I would say is the soup tastes so much better the next day. So I'm just waiting for my um, grains to mix and then we're going to, you know, temper it. So I'm going to just move the stove over and let it cook and then we'll temper it. Now I'm going to do the roti. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a tiny, tiny bit of juggling act because we're going to need uh, the stove. So I'm going to put my soup in my um, in my re re regular stove. I'm going to bring the roti forward. I'm just gonna put the soup on my back burner because I'm gonna make the roti and we'll come back to it in another 10 minutes because the, now the soup is simmering and then we're gonna be tasting it and then tempering it with our um, uh, typical sort of like our South Indian tempering with like mustard seeds and all of that. But that's a very last step, so we'll do it. So now let's put our attention to the roti. Any questions so far? Uh, yes, there are a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, can we make dosa with the soap, soup mix and blend with blend and flavor with different condiments? Dosa? That's the question. The, 
you you can make an, a, you know what the thing with dosa is i mean it leaves a little bit more finicky um dosa you can make out of any grain the only thing is you would need a little bit of a binding agent like uh maybe like cream of wheat so uh if you let's say you take that soup mix and you ground it like you know what it would make it would make a great like a bade a pakora okay that mix you can you can soak it and you can grind it and you can make pakora out of it it's really really good um, but those are, you would need something like a, um, a, to bind it, you would need maybe a couple of tablespoons of cream of wheat and try it out. Because I, I, I think the last demo, we, we kind of talked about similar to making those, but it was a, oops, it was a curry. Uh, sorry, it was a uh, cella, like, you know, the, the, um, the, the, you know, the South Asian pancakes. Uh, but that dough was supposed to be like a dosa. So, you know, if the person didn't attend uh, last uh, demo, you know, please feel free to use that recipe. It makes a great dosa. But when you think about dosa, dosa is really, really fine and papery, whether this is going to be a lot thicker, but it's healthier. Um, with, the, with the dough, uh, I was able to make about uh, 13 to 15 roti. So I'm going to make mine, you know, slightly bigger. There's I'm a question on YouTube. I'm there, sorry? Is a question, there is a question on YouTube. Okay. Can, can we sprout these grains? I'm sorry, what was the question? Can we sprout these grains? Sprouts? Yes. For the soup, absolutely. Sprouts are, uh, you know, the, the thing that I would say is sprouts are so good. I would, uh, I would make a curry out of it rather than put it in a soup. But if you are, if you want to have a soup, that's fine too. But I would use the sprouts for actually more like, um, a, like a really nice subject. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions so far? There's one more, it's about the rasam again. Uh, can we use hing and tamarind in the rasam? Uh, yes, you can, but you saw me putting the lemon because putting the lemon, we are, we're not putting the tamarind. Okay, that's why the lemon is there. Okay, and hing is going to come when I temper my spices. How do I get the recipe of dosa from your last session? Uh, they, they can uh, they can uh, talk to Param and Sandanand. Yeah. They're they're the organizers. They'll be able to email it to that person. Anita, what I'm planning to do is uh, when we send the info about the next program, I will be uh, including the YouTube uh, link to both last one and this one. Okay, yeah, and that's a, there's a follow up to that. Is there a previous uh, link to the previous recording? Yes, there is a yes. link. Any questions so far related to this one? We'll come back to the to the other one in the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my rotis ready. The soup is coming along nicely. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the roti on the, on the tawa, uh, like a, a frying pan. And what you're gonna find is this roti, I'm gonna to try to keep it to about like four to six inches. What you're gonna find is when you're gonna roast it on the pan, it's actually gonna puff up, not like the puff up ones that you see on like, you know, really puffy. But I'm, what, I'm, what I'm gonna say is when it cooks, it's gonna get thicker because that's the beauty of this recipe because we are cooking with whole grain, um, products here, you know, we used jovar, we used, you know, uh, we used, you know, um, 
a millet flour. So what's going to happen is it's just going to get beautiful and it's going to get thicker. So expect it. And that's why I'm saying when you eat it at home, you're going to find it really, 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 really filling compared to your regular chapatis that you, you make at home or store-bought. This is going to be really thick and it's going to really satisfy your hunger for roti. Um, I'll talk very quickly about the, uh, the other um, soup mix that I showed you from a different supermarket. What I ended up doing was in my experiment, when I cooked it, cooked it, um, it really got broken so much. You know, like what I'm saying is like the beans really got smashed, you know, the same regular cooking time. So what did I end up doing was I ended up making like a, um, like a, like a rajma. Rajma is a dish, a uh, Northern Indian dish, but you could, it's kind of like same, you know, thing is made like, you know, Southern part. It's just a, like a bean curry. So what I ended up doing was that, that um, um, smashed, you know, the, the, the grain soup mix, what I ended up doing was I made a traditional rajma, you know, with uh, sauteed onions, adding the, uh, the cooked beans uh, with uh, tomatoes and spices. It came out so, so good. And the best part was, um, again, protein, right? Protein, healthy protein, healthy carb, and it turned out really good. So we ended up actually eating the rajma with these rotis, and it was just a really good accompaniment. So if anybody's interested, uh, I didn't get a chance to write the recipe, but I'll pass it on to Param. Anybody's interested, you could get the email for it. Okay, so we have our roti. I'm not going to make it really big, but this is like about four to five inches. You can make it four to six inches, but when you will uh, put it on the, on the pan, it'll get smaller. Okay. Any questions so far? Hi, Siva. On YouTube, there is a question. Can you post the recipe on YouTube? I'm assuming this means the previous dish you mentioned when you uh, made it like Rajma. I'm assuming that's what they're asking about. No, the, the Rajma is for this one, uh, but I'm going to serve the roti here with just some yogurt because we have... We have vegetable here, we have healthy protein, we have healthy carb, so we don't really need to add anything else. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm keeping my eye on the time. So what I'm gonna do is, if you're interested and to have a, a curry to go with it, what I would do is I would make a curry with just simple, vegetables no 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 starch no potatoes no sweet potatoes no rooty vegetables like you know i would make something like you know what is it like um uh, a bindi curry you know like an okra curry or something like that keep it really really simple with purely vegetable because what i'm really worried about is that you don't want um other things to influence your car okay so i would keep it purely vegetable yeah. Right, right. No, I think they're asking about the other recipe that you mentioned uh, about, you know, you made the beans like in a rajma kind of curry. They're asking about the recipe for that. And you post that on YouTube, they were asking. Yes, that could be sent. It's okay. not ready. It's not ready today, but it'll, it'll, it'll be again, um, any, any people who signed up for this session will get it from uh, Parm. Awesome, thank you so much. She will, probably, she will probably, this is the right time for me to say that you are writing the book in which you will include lots and lots of uh, recipes if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pan ready. It's gonna take a while because again, this, this one is really slow. Um, just have a couple of teaspoons of oil in a pan like this and then just taking a bit of paper towel but you don't need much it's it's going to be super dry because we're not going to put 
anything on it. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the, the, the clock. Any other questions you have? We have 75 minutes for the cooking and the Q&A. So if there's any other questions, please keep them coming because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook the roti and I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. And then when the uh, soup is ready, we're going to temper it and show you how it's going to look like and we're going to plate it. Any other questions? Oh, one thing I was going to show you is when you're chopping your ginger, you know the, the ginger skin? Don't waste it. Save it. And what you can do is dry it. And it's fantastic in your tea. I drink about three cups to four cups of green tea every day. And what I do is I save these, you know, these uh, skins and they're so good. Don't waste them. Just uh, keep them in a, dry them out, and then you can put them in your tea. And that's again zero waste, and it's fantastic use of, you know, using your ginger. Okay, my my. I have a really good. Um, you know, convection, um, uh, sorry, uh, induction cooktop. Uh, I use it a lot for my cooking demos, uh, for live demos, um, but for Zoom, it has a tiny bit of a fan and makes an additional noise and it cooks fast, but unfortunately it would make extra noise. So that's why we're going to a very, very old fashioned sort of like a grill top um, to use. Otherwise I would be using my um, induction one and it's super fast. Okay, so I'm gonna take my roti. I'm just going to put it on the pan. I'm just going to wait for it to roast well. And the way I'm going to do it is we're going to dry roast it. Okay. Can you post the recipe on YouTube? Hmm? Can you post the recipe on YouTube? That's one of the... Yeah, um, again, I think the question was uh, if the recipe could be posted on YouTube. Um, the I'm not so sure if the link could be sent. And I'll have to check with Param to see how that could be done. So uh, uh, Param, do you want to, uh, you know, I think after the, the event is over, uh, if people who are signed up on YouTube are people who registered, you would get it via email. I don't know if it can be posted in YouTube. But again, the organizers can figure out how to do that. Yeah. You would see right I, now. I, sorry, I would I would prefer just to email, not post it uh, publicly. There you go. So now coming back to the roti, I'm going to show you. So what happens is when you roast the roti, when it's cooked, you would get it sort of like opaque. So you could see the colors are changing. That means it's cooked. So this, this is not like your regular chapati because regular chapati is like, you know, when we, we'll come back to the atta flour, we're gonna cook this longer, okay? When your atta flour is sifted, okay? And it takes away all the bran. Okay, that's why when you make um, like a atta roti at home or arpapas flour, it cooks really fast because it's refined, okay? And it cooks really fast. So when you make a roti out of it, you know, you, you put it on a couple of minutes, you know, it cooks fast. But in here, we got four different grains here, okay? So that is what I wanna come back to and saying, we're eating again for healthy eating, we're eating for wellness, we're eating for diabetes. So this roti will take longer, just like last, last demo, when we did the South Asian pancakes, okay? The South Asian pancakes, you know, we, we, we put it and then again, it was much smaller than your traditional like dosa or, you know, your cella or your ade. And guess what? It took longer to cook and we even actually put a lid over it. So the idea is because we're cooking with whole grain, it's going to take longer to cook. You know, we want to see the roasting mark, but it's going to take a little longer. Okay. 
So I'm just going to cook it a little longer and you will see that the roti gets cooked. It like for, for me, I, I noticed it, it took your almost like a double time to, to make your roti roasting. And you will notice that when you do this at home. Okay. And also perhaps you might get a little bit of a different uh, result when you cook it on your conventional stove versus my little, uh, my little guy over here. And one more thing I want to say is I have a, a, a plate here with foil. And this is something that if you're making a lot of roti, what I would do is I would take a plate and I would take some foil. And what you can do is I like to reuse everything. And in the foil, what you can do is you can cook your roti and keep stacking them and fold the foil, you know, foil over and it's going to keep your um, roti nice and hot. Our roti, you could see some brown edges and it's getting cooked. Okay, and I'm going to serve this with just yogurt. Okay, and again, like I said, if you have other kind of a vegetable curry at home, you know, you can serve with it. Um, you know, like if you want to have, uh, let's say, like a sambar or chutney, you know, you can do that. Um, and uh, or if you have like a vegetable curry at home, go for it. Yeah, like you can see now, you can see all these little bubbles. Okay, and I can smell the roti. And you can see it's bubbling. And like I said, it, it's, it takes a little longer than your traditional roti. But, it, but I guarantee you, it's going to be really, really tasty. And there are two things you can do. You can, you can freeze the dough, or you can make all your roti. And you can put like a like a wax paper in between them and you could freeze it. So, you know, you kind of go, gee, I did all this work, you know, uh, gee, you know, the, you know, this recipe, you know, it's, it's not your traditional conventional recipe. But the idea is you can make this into a larger quantity, freeze it, then the days you have it, you just take it out. And then there it is. You have your, you know, your whole grain roti ready. There you go. Shiva, there's a comment about peeling ginger. Why should the ginger be peeled for the soup instead of using well-washed, unpeeled ginger? I'm sorry? Why should the ginger be peeled at all? Why not just use well-washed, unpeeled ginger? Because when you, when you bite into ginger, the skin you know, may not be right texture for people. And for cooking, I like to use, for the soup, it's going to be clean eating. The skin, we're going to use it anyway. It's for the tea. OK, thank you. And this is where, if you want to little, indulge yourself a little bit, what I would do is take a little bit of ghee, and I would just spread it on top, just tiny bit. Again, very sparingly, okay? Then I would just put it in my foil and I would come back to it. I'm gonna roast the second one. And this is where, you know, like I said, ghee, uh, ghee is a lot, there's a lot of question about, hey, should I be using ghee? You know, is is, is good? Um, Again, ghee is something that I would use sparingly. When I say sparingly, is I wouldn't put it on the pan, you know, because the ghee is sitting in the pan and you're wasting it. So the way I would enjoy my ghee is after the roti is roasted, putting a little bit of a ghee on top and enjoying it. Okay. And that way you're getting, you know, your, your fat, but guess what? You're getting it the right way instead of it sitting on the pan. So I'm just dry roasting it in the pan uh, without any oil. But then the idea is have the ghee afterwards. But I would say, again, watch your portion in terms of ghee. And if you have cardiovascular issue, you know, speak to your dietitian or doctor in terms of how much ghee you should have. But I think, again, the food is about balancing all your macros. Macros meaning, you know, balancing your carbohydrate, your... Um, your uh, protein and your, um, you know, your fiber. So the idea is having a little bit of a ghee is a healthy fat, but I wouldn't have a lot, okay? Any other questions uh, related to the roti? Because I'm gonna finish this roti, then we're going to, uh, our soup is ready, and then I'm gonna temper it.
Any other questions from uh, YouTube at all or any, any listeners here? Is anybody cooking along uh, today? Because I know we send the recipe to people. I'm just curious, is there anyone that's cooking today? I'd love to hear on the chat if anybody's cooking along. No, no response. See, well, my, my wife is cooking along with you, both uh, uh, roti and uh, soup. Oh, and, and I, I'd love to hear what she thinks about the soup because our soup is ready. I just turned off and we're going to put it on the stove and we're going to temper it. It's, it's just so good. It's just so comforting. You're going to love making this soup over and over again. I'm just about to temper it, so I'll let you know as soon as I taste it. Fantastic, fantastic. We are, we are like, we're three minutes from tempering it. I'm just waiting for this roti to finish. Yeah, yeah, I made the six rotis. So. Ah, beautiful. And I, and, and, I, and I love to see it after I pre finish presenting is um, how the roti um, looks and, and the, the soup. Show how you taste. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little switcheroo. I'm gonna put the roti on the back. I'm gonna bring the soup forward. Okay, it needs a little bit more water. So what I'm gonna do is the soup is done because you could see, look at these beautiful grains, right? They all beautifully cooked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, just touch more water. But before that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna temper our spices. So to temper our spices, I'm gonna put my little pan there. Probably it's going to take some more time. I'm going to put the one tablespoon of oil that we reserved for the tempering. So for the tempering, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use mustard seeds and I'm going to use, I'm going to use some red chili. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, my supermarket didn't have fresh curry leaves, so I have some dried curry leaves. Dried curry leaves are just as good. And I'm gonna use some hang, okay? This is where the question came, the hang. So we're gonna be doing that. So I'm looking for my tempering stuff. So I'm ready to temper. My oil is heated. Okay, I'm gonna put one teaspoon of mustard seeds. Okay, I'm gonna cover it up. And this is where I do a lot of, uh, what do you call, zero waste. Sometimes if you buy things with foil, these are great, save them. I'm just gonna cover the guy. So I don't want my mustard seeds to escape, so I'm gonna cover it. I'm keeping track of our time. So any any questions so far? Uh, yes, there is a question. How about using vegetable broth instead of water in the soup? Absolutely, go for it. There's another soup related question. Uh, there was a question earlier about soaking the, the soup mix overnight before boiling it to reduce cooking time. No, it doesn't. Uh, I would I would like to have the soup mix cooked the way it is. I like um, the the soaking is a different method. For example, uh, if we're cooking, let's say rice, like you know, soaking your rice before cooking, like a biryani or something, is fantastic. 
but I'm not crazy about the result of soaking the grain and then making a soup, okay? When I make soup, the grain goes directly because I want it to boil with the liquid, okay? Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah, so and also, I don't know if, if soaking... One, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish yeah. what I'm gonna do, yeah. okay? I'm gonna, I'm tempering my, my mustard seeds and I'm gonna put my hing, okay? And I got my curry leaves, okay? I'm gonna bring my soup back. Okay. I'm gonna add just a touch more water. For my soup. Yep, that's a good consistency. Now I'm going to bring my tempered spice. One second, I'm just gonna put it on the camera so you can see. Okay, there you go. Oops. My, we're having some technical issues. Okay. Okay, so you could see that. One second. That was just too far. One second. No, this is uh, so tight. No. One second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm going to add my tempered spice. So now the soup is ready. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my lemon slice out. So you can see the soup is nice and thick. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my coriander, okay? Now I'm going to taste it. I know we haven't put much salt here. This is why it's very important to add the salt in the end. I said in here, um, salt for tasting, but the idea is I want to be really, really careful about how much salt is done. So I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of salt. And this is when you can kind of adjust your taste. And that should do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate my soup. This is what your soup should look like. It's incredible. And you could 
I'm going to move the soup out of the way. I'm going to show you. That looks really pretty. Put some coriander. And if you really want to treat yourself, just a touch of ghee. It's a beautiful touch to it. And here you go, your kitchery rasam soup. This is so healthy. This is so packed with healthy carb. You got some, you know, tomatoes. And I wouldn't put too many other vegetables because this is sort of like the idea of the comfort food that we are used to called kitchery that we eat at home or pongol. And we're making it into a soup, sort of like a rasam. So it's got rasam flavor, but it's also kitchery. And it's such a, such a healthy way of eating soup. So I'm just going to mix the, the ghee. And again, If you have smell-o-vision, you would see how this is incredibly aromatic. And this is our soup. I hope you will make this. <coughs> and you will be making this over and over again. And so that, uh, you know, you can, you can let me know about it. Any, any questions? We're going to do our roti pretty soon. I'm gonna make move the stove out of the way. I see that Param is being uh, yeah. served his lunch. <laughs> Shiva, <laughs> Shiva, this is uh, my lunch, which is made ready by my wife Sharda. Oh my God, that looks incredible. <laughs> Where did you say you live, uh, Param? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, lunch is ready. Very far, very far from you, Sadam. You're most welcome, Sadanandji. <laughs> yeah, good excuse, Param. Thank you, Sharadaji. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, I'm going to bring my other roti here. It's It was done in the back. Look at this. And just this is where, again, just a touch of ghee. There you go. And beautiful, healthy roti and yogurt. That's a really, really nice lunch. And if you want, like I said, you can do like a vegetable subji if you want, but I would keep it potato, sweet potato free, any rooty vegetable free, or you have this beautiful kitchen rasam. It's absolutely delicious. And let's see how this tastes. So the roti, you could see the thickness. It's incredible. I'm going to show, oops, nope. there you go. Can you see? The roti is thick and it's incredibly satisfying. And I would just eat that with some yogurt. It's so good. And if you kind of say, hey, you know what? I'm going to dip it into my restaurant, go for it. Hmm, that's good, but I wouldn't do that because that I want you guys to enjoy as a soup. You will be making this rasam kitchery over and over again, I guarantee you. Excuse me, I'm eating, but when I make it at home, my family loves this soup for lunch. I mean, this is such a meal on its own, but I'm just saying that you can enjoy making it over and over again. And this roti too, it, it kind of feels like it's a bit labor intensive, but guess what? It's so worth it because it's low GI, healthy. You got all the grains in there and guess what? You are going to enjoy making this because it's thick and it's healthier for you. I just want to conclude saying I really enjoyed doing this presentation with all of you. And I just want to quickly say I'm dedicating this uh, a demo to all the mothers and grandmothers and aunts who are there for, you know, Mother's Day is coming. And I wanna be, you know, because a lot of this memory is from my home, from my grandmother and my mother's kitchen. And a lot of this is to kind of give, uh, how do you say, respect to our South Indian, South Asian cooking. Uh, I don't wanna say South Indian because a lot of it is kind of cross like an Indian subcontinent, but, it's to give respect to how we eat. So without changing the recipes, that's my foundation is to keep 
the way that we make our food, but make it diabetes friendly. And lastly, I'm dedicating this demo um, to uh, one of my mother. My mother probably is watching and she was a fantastic cook uh, and she always taught me and she uh, keeps to, you know, she keeps inspiring me. And also I want to dedicate this demo to my mother-in-law who just passed away three weeks ago. And she was an avid fan of all my diabetes work. And this patch I'm wearing, my diabetes sim, is a Scottish patch because she was Scottish and it's an homage. The blue is for the diabetes and the patch is homage to her because she was a, you know, she was Scottish and they were Scottish tart. And so this is, you know, dedicated to her, but it's also I'm dedicating to all the mothers out there because, you know, they, they bring us these recipes. And so I wanted to keep respect to all the things that I was raised, but to make them diabetes friendly and you're going to enjoy making them over and over again and I want to thank Oka and uh, SVBF for bringing this uh, food demo and I want to thank everybody for tuning in and my my daughter and my husband who's been helping me bring this uh, tech uh, to a reality thank you so much I'm going to pass it to Sandana. Thank you Shiva that uh, I first of all uh, want to extend heartfelt condolences to you your family for the loss of your mother-in-law uh, that uh, those two dishes look so good. They go very well with each other. Uh, I must say that uh, your roti brings uh, back my daily time where uh, in the morning, I always used to get paratha and yogurt. And only thing missing there is uh, achara, I guess. But uh, anyway, it looks so delicious. Uh, with that, I'd like, as I had mentioned, this program is brought by uh, SPBF and OCA. So I'd like to bring the uh, Board of Trustee Param and followed by uh, Anita, the president of uh, OCA for their messages and word of thanks, Param. Thank you. Thank you, Sadhana. First of all, thanks very much to Siva for this fantastic uh, demo. And uh, thanks to you, I'm going to have a good lunch as well. Uh, <laughs> yes. Now, my, my only suggestion is you should really teach this to our youngsters, uh, how to cook such a healthy food, whether they are diabetic or not. I think this would be, uh, go very well with the, with the any meal, particularly a, an Indian type meal. So maybe one of these days you should do a live demo for youngsters at SVBF. So anyway, thanks very much for taking the time and effort and thanks very much to Sadhanand uh, and uh, Oka, Anita, uh, Praveen and uh, Anjana. Thanks very much for uh, being a co-sponsor. I uh, hope to see you again soon. Anita? Yeah, I uh, echo Param's uh, sentiment. On behalf of the Ontario Konkani Association, I want to thank you, Siva, for making time for us today. Uh, diabetes has touched my life as well. It's in my household. Um, and I mean, we Google uh, diabetes friendly recipes and there are hundreds of recipes out there, but nothing specific to Indian cuisine, specifically South Indian cuisine and uh, rasam and dosa both are close to our hearts. Um, we love our dosas and which you, we sh you showed us how to make a dosa last, uh, in the last session. So thank you. Uh, I agree with Param. I wish we had started earlier in our 20s and 30s watching our diets. We would not be, you know, um, in a situation today where diabetes is touching our lives. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. I'm definitely going to try your recipes. I did try the dosa. The, I didn't attend the event, but I did try it out. Uh, I will be trying these recipes today. And for our OCA members here, I want to just remind you of our next upcoming event. In, in two weeks, we have our Satyanarayan Puja at the Hindu Heritage Center. Uh, if you haven't registered, please register. And uh, back to you, Sadanan Ma. Thank you, Anita, and thank you, Param. Uh, of course, uh, thank you, Shiva, for showing so much uh, interest in uh, working with us. It has been extremely helpful to us. Uh, with that, I just want to mention about the two programs that are coming up, uh, both related to diabetes. The first one will be on uh, May 29th, that too, thanks to Shiva, the Diabetes Canada South Asian chapter, as well as uh, SPBF, OCA, and the 
Kunkani Association of California will be uh, coordinating this program. It is an uh, information session for diabetes. One of the most interesting part is that uh, we have highly qualified experts from the field who will be our speakers. And there is going to be a lively debate between two professionals uh, debating whether lifestyle change is better or the medication is better. So you can probably try to bet on what they're going to come up with. Uh, the, that will be followed by another program on June 26th. This is also by popular demand because uh, when we held a first diabetes uh, session in uh, October 2018, Abbott uh, Diag uh, Diagnostic had come and uh, talked about the freestyle labor and they would like to do it again. This time, this clinic will be on its own in the sense that there won't be anything else other than freestyle labor. And of course, those who register on request will also get uh, free samples. You will hear about both these programs uh, in a short. Uh, with that, I want to thank everybody. And uh, if we can uh, stop the recording,